Welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike and today we are talking about compound parts in Illustrator and I've got a funny glow under my chin now. <laughs> So today we are talking about compound parts in Illustrator with this little unite button right here. That's what we're going to be focusing on. But before we go jump into that, just very quickly, thank you to all the awesome comments and messages I've got this week. You guys are awesome. It's great to see you all still around. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe and smash the like button because it really helps the channel out. And if you feel so, leave me a comment down below. It's always great to say hello. That's kind of like a wrap, but really and a big thank you to those of you who bought me a coffee this week. You guys are awesome. Really supports the channel. Yes, yes. On to today. So today we're going to be talking about those compound parts using Illustrator and the Pathfinder tool with the Unite button. Specifically the Unite button is what we're going to be focusing on today. So with all that, let's jump over there and get this going. <laughs> so on my screen over here, we have got on the left hand side, we've got a red square with a blue circle. On the right hand side, we've got something a little bit more complex, which is obviously our logo with text and a simple black circle. So on the left, an easy object. On the right, a little bit more of a complex object. First thing we're gonna do is find where this Pathfinder window is. So simple, we just add on the head on up here to window, Drop all the way down to Pathfinder. You see this guy up here. And if you've got funky fingers, there's your quickie right over there. Shift, Command, F9. I think on PC, it's probably Shift, Control, F9. Anyway, just click on that and up pops our Pathfinder window. This is this little guy right here. The shape we are, or the mode we are focusing on today is this one right here, the Unite option. Okay. So with these two shapes here, these are the two simple shapes we're going to be focusing on first. Look how big that icon goes. Woo. So... Make sure you got your selection tool selected, which is this guy here, the selection tool. Click that, hold shift, and click on those two objects. I'm gonna hold down my option key or my alt key, giving those two little arrows there, and I'm gonna click and drag them onto my screen. Just zoom right in there so we can see what we're working with. Okay, so at this point, you clearly see we have got two shapes. We've got the circle and we've got this square. If I simply just drag and overlap them, they are still two objects. You can see by the two different colors. And if I go into wireframe mode, you can still see they have their individual shapes, the circle and the square. Okay, just come out of wireframe. Now, if I select both of these objects, so got my selection tool, remember the, the sneaky guy in the corner up here, I'm going to hold down shift and select both of those objects. Now I'm going to click on this unite button. Now watch what happens. It becomes all red, going to wireframe. There is no line over there completing that circle or the square. If I just quickly undo that in this mode, you can see two objects, one object, and it's red. Now something quite interesting to notice here, if I just undo, the reason why this changed red is because the red is on top of the blue circle. So if I bring that blue circle to the top and do the exact same function, select both of those items, hit this Unite button, everything changes blue. So basically what's happening here is it is taking on the characteristics of the front object. So for instance, if I select our circle over here, I'm just gonna bring in my swatch as quick, just drag that in. And you can see this over here doesn't currently have a stroke. I'm just gonna give it a black stroke. I'm gonna make that nice and thick so we can definitely see what happens here. I'm gonna select both our items. I'm gonna click on Unite, and you can see our square has changed not only to blue, but has taken on the stroke too. So it's taken on the characteristics of that top item. Likewise, if I now move that red square on top of this blue circle, I'm gonna get confused with all these red square, blue circle, just said it a few times and try not to get confused. So red square on top of the blue circle. I'm gonna click on this Unite button and everything changes to red. So it's taking on the characteristics of that top item. Let's just delete that and move on to a little bit more of a complex one. Moving on to a little bit more of a complex situation, we are gonna be focusing on the keep on creating logo bit. So with my selection tool, remember that sneaky tool in the corner, let's click and drag over all these elements here, hold down that option or alt key and click and drag it onto our artboard and wonder why we can't see it because we've made a massive mistake in not making this white a different color. So I'm just gonna select those little bits and make it blue. Okay. So with our elements, I'm just let's just focus on this keep on bit at the top over here. So I'm really gonna 
blow that up so we can see whew, keep on when we have a look at these items or these little uh, text elements over here we can select it in i can move all the all these little bits individually at this point obviously because they are separate graphics now being separate graphics i can change that to a yellow i can change this p to a pink and i can change this k to a white okay if i select all those little elements together so that I, you can see i've selected all of them and we're going to click on this unite function over here i'm just going to move that to the top so we can see so if i select this unite option over here it's going to change to whatever element is right to the top so just click on that and obviously the n was a, the graphic element right to the top if i had to take this p and move that p right to the top select all these little elements all over again and click on that unite button you can see everything changes to pink because the p is on top now something interesting happens here we can actually not like this ribbon at the back here if i get my direct selection tool which is this tool here or a if i select this ribbon and make it black that entire ribbon changes to black however if i select this keep on bit now keep in mind that we have clicked that unite button it should see it as one graphical element so if i click on this e and click on this white it only changes the e it doesn't change all the rest of it now why is that if we just take this element here and i'm literally going to break it down now i'm going to go to object and i'm going to go to ungroup and i'm going to click that just a few times one two three and now everything is individual again so if i select all these items all over again but this time when i click unite I'm going to hold down my option key or my alt key. Okay, and I click on that. You'll see everything changes to pink number one, but this little button has come up here that says expand compound shape. Now, if I click on that, okay, now I'm going to go back with that direct selection tool, which is this guy over here, that A, and I select that E again. You can see everything gets selected this time, and if I change it to white, everything changes to white. Now, that it's seeing this now with clicking that uh, while clicking this unite key while holding the option key and then clicking expand it is seeing this as one object same as it's seeing this ribbon as one object it is seeing this as one object now why could that be important i actually like doing this especially when i'm doing say like business card layouts or anything particular that i'm handing over and i don't want any stray colors in there so for instance if this e happens to be just that shade off a white and the rest of these items are actually white now how do i know i can't really see the difference in that however this is probably this has got a 10 percent, so you can actually see oh, so they got a five percent k now if we had to send this job off to print that may be a little bit of a problem because this will be slightly darker when it actually prints and your customer may not be too happy about that now this could be a small little element it could be a big little element but to take that completely away hold down that option key click on that click on expand and now you know every color everything in there is going to be the same color when you haven't selected so problem solved you don't have to worry about any of that that is what the unite function does and that is how we create a compound path that is a compound path here those letters there are a compound path that circle is currently a compound path now that square in that circle is now a compound path to get where i'm going with this it's called a compound path over to you and now we all know a little bit more about that compound path what they do how they separate from individual like a group into a united object the compound path it's also a little bit confusing isn't it but when you're handing over your artwork now at least you can tell that it's a single color object like i was saying so if i'm handing over a screen print or a business card or anything like that i can simply select one color and make sure it's the same color or make sure an object is one object if i need it to be we're all a little bit wiser so that about brings us to the end of another episode don't forget to hit that subscribe button smash that like button leave a comment and I guess I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out of here.